Welcome back to another exciting YouTube video. And what we are talking about today is the Ibanez RG5320 CSW. This is a guitar I just got and we're going to go over a few things on it and check it out and see how it is. This is called Cosmic Shadow and as you can tell, it's a Cosmic Shadow. <laughs> it is black with uh, these silver uh, inlays in it. It kind of looks like uh, black marble actually. It's got a um, very, very striking top. I, I really do like this. It's uh, got a serious metal look to it and you know, if, if if you're not playing guitar and using it as a band, you can set it on your black marble countertop and I guarantee you it would blend right in because that's exactly what it looks like is black marble. But on that note, I really do like it. I think it's got a very slick finish on it. Uh, the finish is just fantastic. Incredibly smooth. Um, I've had this for about a day, a couple days now, and I've been going over it and I can't find a single flaw in that finish anywhere. And they did a really fantastic job laying that down. Uh, moving on, uh, this guitar is mahogany, and dude, it is one slap of mahogany. This is just one big piece. That is fantastic. Good job, Ibanez. They didn't, you know, so many guitars, you know, they'll have the center piece and they'll cut and they'll glue the wings onto the side. This is just one big old fat slab of mahogany, and they didn't it. Yeah, make sure. Yeah, I'm absolutely correct. That is one slab. There is absolutely no seams in there whatsoever. And if there's a seam in there, buddy, I definitely cannot see it, but that is one piece. Yeah, they did a great job with that. Uh, guitar feels like it weighs about seven and a half pounds. Uh, right around there somewhere, maybe between seven and a half and eight. Uh, it's got a little bit of girth to it. I like that because that gives you a good, fat, chunky sound out of it. And the, uh, it does have a binding on it, so because there's a binding, a binding, this is a mahogany top that they have capped and put this color down on it. They do have it bound, as you can see here. And they did a great and absolutely fabulous job on the binding. I mean, I can't find, I can't fill a single seam in that binding anywhere. And so many times I have uh, played Les Pauls, and you can just feel the binding. It just feels kind of shoddy, the way they do the work. This one is absolutely fantastic. There is, I mean, there's not a single groove on there anywhere. And it's not overtly sharp on the edge. I got some guitars, the binding is just crazy sharp. And when you play it, it just kind of digs into your arm. Now, granted, this one does have the recessed forearm cut, so you're not going to have a problem with that. And so it's... But they kind of rounded that binding just, just enough to make it comfortable where it's not going to hurt your arm, of course. Of course, this does have the rib cutaway. Not a fan of that at all. I do not like rib cutaways. I do know that it comes on this style of guitar, and it is going to come you know, on um, these uh, S-body guitars. This isn't the Ibanez S-series, but this is an S-body guitar. And it, it is going to come on that... I'm not a fan of that for the simple reason, and if you've watched any of my other videos, I'm sure you've heard me talk about it, is because when I'm playing the guitar, and when you put your arm on the guitar, like everybody in the world does, the guitar has a tendency to roll up on you. And I don't like that because I'm playing the guitar more shaped, more sitting this way than I am this way. So I am not a fan of that, and I wish they would make one without the cut in it. I think that would be fantastic and something that I would really, really get into. And, and that's a lot of the reason why I went to the S-Series, because it doesn't have this cut. And of course, you know, the super thin body on the S-Series, which, next to my Wolfgangs, I think the S-Series, I, I just, I love them. I think they're some of the greatest guitars on the market, especially for the money, for that 1070 1300 bucks, best guitar on the uh, market for that amount of money. But this one, is, it's got a comfortable body. You know, if you do like this type of stuff with all the cutaways on it, then the body's going to be extremely comfortable to you. Personally, not a big fan of that. And for the simple reason, it does cause the body to roll. I do not like that. And I'm going to move on to the rest of the guitar before we start getting to the appointments and stuff. 
Uh, this does. The neck feels absolutely amazing. This is a super wizard neck. It is mahogany and maple. Uh, what I do like about it is it is not painted. Big thumbs up. I do not like painted necks, but it is satin. And, you know, I could deal with a satin neck. Not my first choice. I like unfinished. I don't really have any guitars with a satin neck on it. So I'm assuming that, you know, because uh, guitars with a painted neck, like on a Paul, when my hand gets sweaty, to me, the neck gets a little tacky. And I'm assuming this neck's going to do the same thing because even though it is satin, it still has that feel to it. I like that unfinished neck, you know, that, that porous uh, feel to it, like on my 1070 and, of course, on all my EVHs. They have unfinished necks on them. Uh, this does have an ebony fretboard. I love ebony. Ebony is a very snappy wood and it gives you a really tight bottom end. Um, I, my uh, 1070 has um, Panga Panga, which is very similar to ebony in the density. And this has a, a very similar to maple also as far as uh, the, the tonal characteristics of it. Because maple is a very snappy wood. So I really do like ebony fretboards. Not a big fan of rosewood. And hell, I don't even know if you can get rosewood. Because there for a while they had a... Um, there was some kind of fungus on rosewood. So they quit importing it. So... I think a lot of manufacturers are getting away from that, but don't hold me to that. Uh, moving on with the neck, huge plus, huge thumbs up. Ibanez actually put stainless steel frets on this guitar. Way to go, Ibanez. I love stainless steel frets. These frets are impeccable. They're buttery smooth. I mean, I can't feel any type of flaw in these frets anywhere. They feel absolutely fantastic. But what's even better is this has the Ibanez prestige fret treatment. The fret treatment on this thing is absolutely superb. And I've got to be honest with you, I have held a lot of guitars. I have not felt many guitars that have the fret dressing as well as this guitar. It is magnificent on this guitar. And i got to be honest with you, that's a big pet peeve of mine. Uh, man, shoddy fret work, uh, it just oh, tears me up absolutely tears me up. And what's even worse is when somebody sends a guitar out from a manufacturer with a shoddy fretwork. Uh, that was my big complaint with the uh, Nita Strauss Jiva. Uh, I've had three of them and the, the fretwork on all three was absolutely atrocious. And I know it's an Indonesian main guitar, but that's no excuse because the 1070 PVZ is also an Indonesian made guitar and the fretwork on mine is fantastic. So that no excuse for that. And I guess that's why the guitar has such a high return rate. Because everybody I know who's bought one has returned it. However, the fretwork on this guitar is absolutely phenomenal. I mean, I can't feel a, a sharp edge anywhere. And when I'm rolling my hand up and down the neck, I can barely feel the frets. That is just amazing. So I guess they're a prestige fret treatment. I guess it I guess it really is a prestige fret treatment. But what's really nice about this, besides the stainless steel frets, which, by the way, are jumbo. I'm not a fan of jumbo. That is what comes on my 1070. On my Wolfgangs, I think I've mentioned this. I got the skinny talls, and they're, they're very similar to a vintage fret, but they're taller. They're really skinny. I really like those, but they're just a little taller. Not as tall as these, of course. I deal with it on my 1070 because I like the guitar so much, but these are kind of like speed bumps, man. When you're sliding, it's just, they're just huge. They're huge feeling. And that's not going to affect 99% of the people out there. I'm sure there's not many of us, like myself, that just really don't like jumbo frets too much. But I guess that's the price, you know, when you're, when you're an old dude, you know, you've been playing guitar, you know, since the damn dinosaurs before they started making jumbo frets. So I, that probably has a lot to do with it also. But the fret work, the second to none. It is absolutely outstanding on this guitar. What's really nice though, really, really nice, is if you can see, I'm gonna hold this up there and hopefully it'll autofocus, try to line it up. If you can see on this guitar, they bound the neck. Absolutely amazing Ibanez did that. It's just, they did a fantastic job. I mean, it's smooth all the way around, no seams anywhere that I can feel. I mean, they just did an amazing job. And here's what's really cool, because you have, obviously, the Cosmic Shadow, but you also have the Headstock, which is Cosmic Shadow. That is very nice. I, I, I hate it. Absolutely hate it when a guitar comes with, you know, you'll have a colored body and then a black headstock. Um, 
EVH does that on a lot of his guitars. I'm not a big fan of that. Sir actually used to come with a matched headstock. And then I guess two, three years ago, they started putting black on it and started charging another $300 for matching headstock. Are you kidding me? The guitar's already $3,000 and I gotta pay another $300 just to get a matching headstock? Huge fail on Sir's part. Huge fail on their part. Uh, but what they did is they took the binding all the way around the headstock. And it is absolutely flawless. I mean, they did an impeccable job on this binding. And I gotta tell you, I only don't have that many good things to say about a guitar. <laughs> and I gotta be honest, I don't have that many bad things to say about this guitar. It is just, it's, it's amazing. Uh, they did put the Illumilay dots in it, or as I like to call them, the Illuma Don't Glow dots. Um, you've heard me complain about this on the 1070s, or any guitar actually that has a dark uh, neck on it. Fortunately, now this is on maple, so it's not that big a deal, but they put the uh, Illuminlay dots inside of the white binding. First pointer is they're dead smooth. You can't feel them in there at all. Second pointer is after these things quit working in about two minutes, then you're still going to be able to see them on a dark stage because they've got these dark dots sitting on the white binding. If they would have done that on my 1070, it probably would have been pretty damn close to the perfect guitar. I think that's one fail that they had on the 1070 because the neck is so dark that when these things quit glowing, you can't see them. You just can't see them anywhere. Moving on, uh, we do have, of course, the uh, standard Ibanez headstock on it, which is fantastic. Obviously, it does have a locking uh, nut on it. This, I do think, is a fail on Ibanez's part. Is They uh, got a Gota tuning machines on it, but they are not locking machines. My 1070, which costs $700 less, has locking machines on it. I, that makes no sense to me, uh, especially if you're a gigging musician and, you know, the 99.9999% of us who don't have roadies, um, people, you know, working on our gear, we're playing a show, we break a string on our favorite guitar, we got 10 minutes to change that string. With the, um, the locking tuners, loosen this up, un uh, undo the lock on it, boom, that string will come shooting out, break it loose at the bottom, screw it back in, put it in, all you do is give it a pull, tighten it, turn, 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 you're done. On this guitar, if you break a string, Obviously, after you unlock everything, you get to go to this. And you're going to do like everybody else does. You're going to cut the string and pull it off. But then you get to tune it. So you put your string in there and you crank and crank and crank. And crank and crank and crank forever to get the damn thing on. I hate that. They should have put locking machines on this, especially for a $2,000 guitar. Now, I can't complain about that too much because the quality of this thing is absolutely fantastic. And I got to be honest with you, I had a $3,000 Sir, and I will tell you right now, this guitar plays better than my Sir did. And proof to that point, I paid $3,000 for my Sir. And believe it or not, on my EMB string at frets uh, 13, 14, and 15, dead. Absolutely dead. No sustain whatsoever. Shoddy fretwork. The frets were not level. They were actually too far in. Well, actually, they were kind of like this and shocking on that. So I actually ended up taking that guitar back, uh, believe it or not. And because um, you know they're stainless steel, and I was going to have to have frets lifted and filed. I'm not doing that on a $3,000 guitar. So, um, and, but while they were working on the guitar, get this the, uh, the neck broke, uh, the paint cracked right here at the pocket. And so we sent the guitar back to Sir. Nine weeks later, I still did not have my guitar back. Uh, luckily, the place I bought it from, they were good guys. They uh, just let me return the guitar and gave me the money back. Uh, so, you know, good thing for the guitar dealer, not a good thing for Sir. Uh, moving on though, again, should have come with locking uh, machine tuners on this guitar. That is a bit of a fail. Like I said, I can't really complain too much because the rest of the guitar is phenomenal. Back to the neck. This neck is a scant 19 millimeters wide at the 12th fret right here. What does that mean to you? This thing is thin. It is called the Super Wizard and it is super thin. It is, uh, my PBZ is about 21 millimeters. And I gotta tell you, it took me a minute to play that coming off of my Wolfgangs because not only do the Wolfgangs have the Eddie Van Halen carve, which is, I'm sorry, the best carve in the guitar world, period. 
at Sadie Van Halen. But also, the string spacing on an EVH is closer. Uh, the, these are a little wider, so it took me a minute to adjust to that thin neck to a wider neck, which now I absolutely love it on my 1070. And it's, um, I just absolutely love it. But going from that 21 millimeter to a 19, I got to tell you, it's, again, it's a big jump for me. Um, it's a little too thin for my taste, to be honest with you. If this was around a 21, 22, 23 millimeter neck, then I would be just crazy about it. But it's a touch on the thin side for me. And, you know, granted, we're guitar players. We can play anything. But you still have that adjustment period you got to go through. You know, it's, you know, I'm not Eddie Van Halen, so I can't pick up, you know, he can pick up a freaking rock, put some hair on it, and <laughs> the thing will sound like a billion dollars. I cannot do that. Um, this guitar does have a 16.9 degree radius. What does that mean to you? That means it is flat. This thing is a shred machine. Um, if you're into seriously shreddy guitar, you don't have to go any further than this guitar. This thing fits the bill all the way around. This thing is set up for one reason, and that is to freaking burn. And this guitar does exactly that. It burns. Um, crazy flat neck. Um, PV EVHs, they have a 15 degree radius to kind of give you an idea of what we're looking at here. Uh, the S Series 1070, it's got a 15.75 degree radius. As you go up, it gets flatter. Typical fenders probably have, um, you know, my fenders had a 12 degree radius necks on them, so they're a little bit rounder. Uh, John Petrucci on the new Majesties, they're running a 17 degree radiuses. But on the JP7, he was running a 15 degree radius, and they're running straight radiuses. On the Sur and on the new EVHs, they are running compound radiuses. Uh, the Sur, I believe, is 12 to 15 or 12 to 16. The EVHs are 12 to 16. I do like a straight radius. I like my guitar to play the same here as it does here. That is a personal preference for me. I'm glad they went with a straight radius and not a compound. I do like straight radiuses. Um, at, in all honesty, every compound neck guitar I've ever had, I've gotten rid of. Every one. I just like a flat radius across the board. Personal preference, just how I play. But, like I said, super, super skinny neck. So, um, you know, if this is your thing and you want something that you can just turn and burn on, this is the guitar. Because, I mean, this guitar just even freaking looks metal. This is as metal as it gets. Um, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. And honestly, I love the guitar. And if I was in a serious hardcore metal band, this would be the only axe I would play ever. But. This is one thing, this is one issue I have with RGs, and it's not the top. I like the top, I love the top, and I can make this top work in any type of band that I play in, period. But I, my one big caveat with the RGs is this wing right here. I mean, granted, it's very functional because you have access all the way to the 24th fret. Let me grab my guitar pick, my blue chip composite guitar pick. See, they should pay my ass every time I say that. <laughs> I should have a little dollar sign that goes cha-ching every time I say my blue chip composite guitar pick. Um, because this is so deep, you do have, you got access, easy access, all the way to the 24th fret. That is fantastic. And this is a huge cutaway, so there's nothing to get in the way of your hand. But on the flip side of that, being that it is such a huge cutaway, it looks very, very metal. My 1070, one of the things I really like about it is I can play metal on it. Then I can go play blues on it. I can play jazz on it. Lord, I can go to church on Sunday and play gospel on it. And that guitar is going to look and feel at home in any of those situations. I, you know, I really don't see you doing a lot of blues and jazz gigs with this guitar. Tonally, wait till you hear this thing. <laughs> It is freaking amazing. Uh, the DiMarzio Fusion Edge pickups, oh my god. <laughs> These things are awesome beyond belief. Tonally, this thing is a beast, an absolute beast. But simply, and like I said, I could get by with the look, even the uh, Cosmic Shadow. It's just the cutaway of it. It just freaking looks metal. It's like uh, playing a, um, you know, Kurt Hammett's guitar. It's black, you can get away with it anywhere, minus the skull and crossbones, of course. You can't really do a whole lot with that. But just the look of that ESP, it just looks metal. There's, you just can't take that guitar to a jazz gig. Same thing with this. 
you cannot take this guitar to a jazz gig. Well, okay, then you just go buy a different Ibanez. You know what? Maybe I don't want a different Ibanez. Maybe I want these pickups and this guitar with the greatest tremolo in the world, which I'm getting ready to get up to, and maybe I want a 16.9 degree radius next with 19 millimeters between it. Maybe that's what I want. Maybe that's the guitar that fits me perfectly, but guess what? You're not going to do a lot of blues and jazz gigs with this guitar. You can, don't get me wrong. And like I said, tonally, wait till you hear this thing. It's crazy. The, the, the I'm speechless. <laughs> it sounds so good. It left me absolutely speechless. This thing is just it's amazing, amazing. But the look to me is a little bit of a bummer. Simply because it is just so metal looking. All right, now let's move on to some of the appointments on this thing. Obviously, we talked about my... One of my really big complaints is uh, no locking machines. Bummer, but they are damn good machines nonetheless. We do have all matching hardware. Thank God. Uh, the Nita Strauss Jiva, dude, it was <laughs> my tremolo, my nut was one color, this knob was one color, this knob was one color. That guitar is just so shoddy and so junky. Um, thank God they're making that a uh, new X series. Now that one, dying to get my hands on that. I'm pretty sure it's going to be just a regular prestige model with the EKG inlay with the um, ebony fretboard, but still, that should be a freaking slick guitar. Kind of dying to get my hands on that one. Uh, now, back to the appointments. Ibanez Low Pro Tremlo, the best trim system on the market bar none. Nobody makes a tremolo as good as a low pro. I would put these on my EVHs if it wasn't a necessity for me to have my uh, D-Tuna. If you could figure out a way to put a D-Tuna on this thing, this would be on every one of my guitars. It is simply an amazing trim system. Now this one, out of the box, the setup was not as good as it should have been. Tremolo's a little high. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this from where you're at. But the trim should have been about right here. And so actually it's probably got about four or five millimeters. I've got to pull it back um, into the recess to get this thing level. When you have your low pro trim set correctly and level, this thing is a freaking dream. It's literally non-existent. What I like about it is you have the saddles here and the saddle locks are here. You have your tuners on the back out of the way of your hand. That is just a brilliant design, but that also keeps you from putting a detuner on it. A bummer, but you know what? Sometimes you gotta give a little to get a little. Even without the detuner, this thing is simply freaking amazing. This is an awesome, awesome trim system on it. Um, has the uh, locking nut, of course, to keep everything in tune, in check, ready to rock and roll and shred at all times. Very, very good. I love, I love, I love the Low Pro Tremlos. They are amazing. I wish I had this on my 1070. The one on my 1070 is very good. Am I going to change it? No. I'm not going to spend the money because that one works like a damn dream. Uh, what I do not like about this, though, this is actually my biggest complaint of this guitar. I do not like the trim setup in the back. This has the old claw system on it, which a billion guitars use it. This, in my opinion, simply is not as stable as the other trim system they have with the adjustment wheel in it. Um, I think that's a better trim system. I think it's a more stable trim system. I think it stays in tune better and it's a hell of a lot easier to adjust. Because I mean, you just crank, 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 you're done. You don't have to pull this crap off, get out a screwdriver, turn, 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 turn. You don't have to do any of that with that. That is just an, an amazing system. And I like the fact that it's so trim, uh, so trim, I like trim. But I like the fact that it's so easy to use on that trim system. What I don't like about these trim systems, and I'm probably going to get a little bit of flack about this, uh, is because I don't like that warble that comes with it. And I'll show you what I mean here in a minute. I know a lot of people use it. Uh, Nita Strauss does it. Steve Vai does it. Uh, Cetriani does it. You know, where you smack the trim and it gives you that warbly tone. I personally cannot stand that. And I'm going to tell you why I cannot stand that here in a minute. Um, it's not that I hate the effect, I just hate that it does it when I don't want it to do it. That's what I don't like about it. The other trim system is just a much more stable system. I wish they would have put it on this guitar. The heel on this guitar, very similar to most Ibanez's. Again, I wish it was just a little thinner, uh, but I really have no complaints. It is a very comfortable heel. It is sculpted, and you still have very easy access all the way up to 24. 
So I really can't complain about that too much. That's just kind of something that hits my wish list. I wish it was just, just a, just a, a wee bit, just a, just a tad. I mean, thinner. I mean, and then I'd be happy. And that's all it would take in this world to make me happy. <laughs> that would make me happier than hell, actually. So yeah, that is, and that's not really a complaint, and that would not deter me from buying this guitar at all. Um, it's just, you know, my wish list of, you know, the perfect guitar for me. And, um, which one point, that's another video I'm going to do. And, uh, what I would consider to be the perfect guitar, which obviously they don't make it, so I will not have a guitar, uh, when I talk about that. Alright, moving on. Like I said, trim system, absolutely phenomenal. Low pro. I cannot say enough good things about the low pro. Okay, moving up. Now we're coming into some, some of the heat here. These are the DiMarzio Fusion Edge pickups. These things are amazing. Oh my God. I was actually going to put the um, Nita Strauss Pandemoniums in my 1070. Dude, after playing this, I'm seriously rethinking my position on that. These things are just freaking phenomenal. I love these pickups. What I really love about these pickups is DiMarzio and Ibanez got together to design the pickups. That to me is essential essential for a guitar manufacturer to do that. I don't want a guitar, and this is actually one of my big complaints about my 1070. Now it sounds great. It sounds great. I've said it a million times. Those are not my favorite pickups. Those are pickups that they just plucked off of a shelf and put it in that guitar. Those pickups were not designed for that guitar. Now can I put a better pickup that is more suited to that guitar in it? Absolutely. Anybody can do it if you know what to look for in a pickup. If you don't, that's where the guesswork comes in. Before you know it, you've ran through 400 pickups, you're broke, and you don't know what to do. And now you can't hear anything because you've just heard so many different sounds that now nothing sounds good to you. EVH. I love EVH that he makes his own pickups. The pickups in an EVH guitar are designed specifically to go in that guitar. So you know it's going to sound fantastic out of the box. No questions about it. Uh, Sir makes their own pickups. I have a love-hate relationship with Sir. God, apparently I need to do a video on how much I'm pissed off at Sir. Um, the rear pickup, that SH1 or whatever the hell they call it, amazing, amazing, amazing. That front pickup and my uh, Sir, one of the worst pickups I ever had in my life. I don't know why people like it. I don't know why people praise it. It was so wooden sounding. Wooden as in W-O-O-D-E-N. It just, there was nothing creamy smooth about it, nothing. It was just, I thought it was an atrociously bad pickup in that guitar. On the flip side, DiMarzio, Ibanez get together. Did they make this pickup for this guitar? I don't know, but they made this pickup and they put it in this guitar. And let me tell you, <laughs> there's nowhere else in this world this pickup needs to be besides in this guitar. It works fantastically in this guitar. Uh, I'm, I'm, I mean, this is, this is eggs and bacon. Peanut butter and jelly. Peanut butter and chocolate. That's what this is. These are made for each other. They're just phenomenal. I cannot say enough good things about this. Um, and you would think that I would just play this guitar all the time as much as I love it, but I won't. I will still play my 1070 and my EVHs. Uh, but that's just a personal thing for me. Anybody else who buys this guitar, I'm telling you, this will be your main guitar out of the box. Uh, this does have a coil tap, which is fantastic. What I do not like is that little sharp lip they got right there on that coil tap. Take a hammer and beat that damn thing in. I hate that. Uh, but this does have a coil tap, and this thing just absolutely sounds brilliant. With that being said, let's move on to the sounds. As usual, we're coming straight out of the guitar into my uh, Kemper. I'm going coming out of my head rush into the room mics. I do not like running direct for this because I don't think direct, even though you're hearing it out there, I still don't think direct gives you an idea of what it sounds like in here. Not that this really does, but direct is just direct and you don't hear anything else but a signal. That's it. So I always like running through my cabs, um, particularly through this cab for this, of course. So let's hook this dude up. Let's see what we got. Let's get the guitar stand up the way. Okay, we're going to hear a little noise here because we got a very heavy gain channel dialed in first. For a reason, we are running this heavy gain. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. 
guitar is amazing. Let me get the trim arm. Oh, real quick, before we get into that, let's talk about this trim arm. Uh, again, you know, you never get that perfect guitar. Personally, I like threaded collars on my guitars. Um, playing, I can reach down with my pinky. I can kind of give it a little crank, fall a little tighter, get a little push, fall a little looser. This is a push-in trim arm. I don't like them. I've never liked them. I still don't like them. I never will like them. Did I say I don't like these? Now, granted, these do have an adjust. Uh, when you go in from the back side, there is an adjustment in here. You can adjust the screw tension on it. Uh, out of the box, dude, this thing, oh my God. Watch this. <laughs> you got to crank the hell out of that thing to get it in there. And then the other thing I like about it is that it just stays. Being that I am a rock and roll dude and I like to look the part like everybody else does, homie, is I like my shit swinging. And I like my trim arm to swing also. <laughs> so I like mine to move because when it's moving, it's always around here somewhere. And even if I flip it out of the way, it's still always going to return down to here. This one, if I'm playing, I flip it out of the way. Now it's back here. And if I need to grab it real quick, I don't like that. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I know a lot of people do. I watch Steve Vai play all the time. And where's he got his sitting? Right there on the damn back. That's what he's used to. I can dig that. I can appreciate that. Hell, he's Steve Vai. He can do whatever the hell he wants to do. Uh, for me, I like mine to swing a little bit. So that means I would have to go in here and adjust the tension screw. Okay, now once I get that tension screw adjusted to where this thing is free swinging, how stable is it inside the trim system? I do not like that. Threaded collars, please, Ibanez. Low pro trim loads with threaded collars, the ultimate setup. Please, 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 please do not start doing this to all your guitars. Um, moving on, back to the pickups. Again, let me grab the greatest pick in the world, my blue chip pick. Uh, let's see here. Uh, this thing is just freaking out. I mean, there's just harmony. I mean, it's everywhere. Was... I mean, this, this guitar is incredibly harmonic. Uh, and that's just... That is quality woods, quality craftsmanship, and then just having a really good set of pickups and a really good guitar. And that, that's what makes your guitar very harmonic. And that is, and I'm gonna tell you, that is critical to have a harmonic guitar. Um, that makes the guitar lively. And uh, you want a lively guitar. You don't want something that sounds dead and wooden, like my sir did. You want something that's just, I like my guitars on the verge of feeding back all the time. And, um, Granted, I'm running a lot of game and it's turned down, but I'm going to tell you, man, if I turn this thing up one click on the volume, this thing would cut loose. I love that. Absolutely love that. Being that this, these pickups here, they complement this neck very well. These pickups have a very tight bottom end, just like I like my women. And they have a very, they, they, they have a, a very cutting mid in them. And I don't mean cutting in a bad way. It just, it's very clear. Uh, for instance, all the gain I've got on this channel, this is a EVH EL34, and it's pretty much pegged on the gain. Listen to the definition of this thing. Every single note. That's amazing to me. That's amazing. All that gain, and it is just unbelievable, and it's just so tight and punchy. Oh my god, it's just, <laughs> just the sound on this thing is phenomenal. And I'm gonna tell you, there's not many guitars that make me this happy over tone. Uh, the only one is my EVH because I think they're just, I think that's just a uh, lie, absolute lie. Gibson ES335, heavenly, absolutely heavenly. There's nothing else you need to say about the tone of an ES-335. Heavenly. Says it all. But dude, this thing is just a freaking beast. I love trim systems. What I do not like about this system is right there. This is what I do not like. I absolutely hate that. 
front words. Do not like that at all. My 1070 does not do that. It has got a more stable trim system in it. Well, Trace, that's pretty cool. Why do you hate that? Because sometimes when I'm playing, I just want to reach down and just give it a little, a little dip, just a little, just a little, little love tap, just a little nudge, like that. And it wobbles. I do not like that at all. My EVHs don't do that because they are hard mounted on the back. My 1070 does not do that because it has that, that just by far superior to every other trim setup in the world in the back of it. It just, it doesn't do that. A lot of people are going to like that wobble. They use it. I see a lot of guitar players use it. Personally, I do not like it. If you like a wobbly guitar, <laughs> then this is definitely one for you. Because buddy, it wobbles. I love floating trim systems. All guitars should have floating trim systems. There's a, you just can't, you can't do stupid shit like that. That one. Okay, moving on. Back to these incredible freaking pickups, man. This is the rear pickup. All right, so we're going to run through like I do in all my reviews. Speaking of reviews, let me jump the page here for a minute after I get a taste of my refreshing beverage. See, I didn't mention the name of what I'm drinking because they're not going to pay me. But then again, neither is anybody else going to pay me. So these guitars, I buy these damn things. <laughs> Nobody gives me shit. So this is not an, oh my God, I love Ibanez, they're paying me to do this. Hell, my channel's new and nobody's paying me to do anything. I buy these guitars. And if it's a crappy guitar like that needed Strauss Jeeva, I'm gonna tell you, it's a crappy guitar. But I've had a few comments uh, uh, recently pop up on my channel and a lot of guys saying, hey dude, love the review, thanks a lot. Uh, Cause you know, you you get to the, to the business part of it. You don't sit there and play and play and play and play and you know, just, show us how good of a guitar player you are, you actually talk about the guitar. And you know, hey, thanks guys, appreciate it, glad you liked the reviews, yada yada. And I gotta admit, I do not watch a lot of guitar reviews. I absolutely do not. I like to make up my own mind. Get the damn guitar, buy it, if I like it, boom. There I am. If I don't like it, boom, there it goes. But out of the blue, it was another Ibanez, a new one, I can't remember what model was. And I thought, you know, this guy's doing a guitar review, I'm gonna watch it. Five minutes and 28 seconds of him playing before he said one word about that guitar. I understand what those guys were saying when they said thanks for that. I promise as long as I do this, I will never do that. Because <laughs> that drove me insane. I kept fast forwarding. Get on with it, bro. Get on with it, bro. Get on with it. Five minutes and 28 seconds of him noodling around on the guitar. So, as long as I'm doing reviews, I will never do that. I will get straight to the point. Granted, you got to get through all my meandering vocally, so because I do a lot of talking. Uh, but back to the guitar and the amazing sounds this thing produces. As usual, I play the same riffs on all pickups, so here we go. Amazing. I mean, just amazing. Listen to that. Amazing. All right, now we're moving. Of course, this is the uh, rear coil. Now we're moving to the doubles. These are both coils, all four coils turned on, double coil pickups. A little volume would help. Still sounds good. It sounds like I would expect it to sound with two double coils on it. Um, still sounds good. Granted, you're not going to play stuff like that on, on this setup, but it still sounds very good. Front pickup, uh, dude, don't need to say anything else. That is insane for a front pickup to sound that good playing a riff like that. Insane. Okay, moving on. This does have the coil tap on it, and we, of course, we are in the double mode. Now we're going to flip this little bitty switch up right here. Click. And now this is going to put us in single. So on the single, going to the rear pickup, playing the same exact riff again. This is going to surprise you, because this surprised the hell out of me. That is the single. Dude, that thing freaking rocks. <laughs> it sounds fantastic. 
Uh, it's just, oh my God, it's just hot. And what it is, it's actually this coil right here in the front. Uh, when you move into the uh, coil tap, it plays the center coils, not the outside coils. Here we go. So, okay, remember, this goes to the two single coils uh, in the center. Here we go. Same riff. Pretty much sounds like what I would expect two single coils to sound like in that position. Now to the front. This is where things start to get interesting. That sounds every bit of a front single coil pickup. That is beauty. No noise. All that gain. That is also a thing of beauty to me. Dead freaking silent. I l God, they just did such a great job on these pickups, and especially on the split. Um, give you an idea of what's going on here. We are on front single mode. Full. Front. I don't know if you can hear it there. I can hear a little bit of a difference. There's not a whole lot in gain in a volume drop off. I absolutely love that. They did a great job with that. Going to the rear. We are in double coil, single, double, again, slight difference in tone, um, it's just that those singles are just crazy freaking hot, and I like that, and you're probably thinking, well, hell, why have them on there if they sound exactly the same? Because when you clean it up is where things really start to change, and I'll show you that in a minute. Okay, back to single coil mode. Now we're on these two centers right here. Again, just a slight variation in tone and even a slighter variation in volume. That's amazing to me. On distorted channels, you have hardly no volume drop on that at all. Okay, so now we're gonna get things a little bit more interesting. So now we're gonna switch over to a Fender Twin. Here we go. Back in double coil mode, we're on the rear pickup. like a rear pickup on a clean channel. Now we're going to switch to uh, both double coils. Absolutely sounds fantastic and right on the verge dig into that because I've got literally no gain on this you dig into that you turn that gain knob up one you drive that hard it's gonna it's gonna uh, you're gonna overdrive that onto the front Sounds fantastic. Now let's move over to the singles. Okay, here we go. This is the double. Single. Now's where these things start to shine. Single coil mode on a clean channel. Dude, these things bring out all the fender spank you could possibly imagine. That sounds fantastic on the rear pickup. I love that. That sounds so much better because I really don't like double coils on clean channels on the rears. I don't have a lot of use for that. Not a big fan of that. Click that dude in a single. 
brings out just a little bit of that glass and chime that it's missing in the double coil mode and that sounds amazing here's where it really gets good now we're into the split we're playing these two center coils this sounds fantastic <laughs> That sounds good. It almost reminds me of uh, Tom Schultz from Boston when he would run his P90s and his Les Pauls on his clean channels. Dude, that is exactly what that sounds like to me. That's exactly what that sounds like to me. That is just a classic freaking tone. Moving up to here, real quick, single coil, uh, double coil, single. Amazing. Dude, I'm just freaking blown away by these pickups. The, the, the tonal variations on these things is just freaking sick. I just cannot get over how good these pickups sound. And I'm gonna tell you, dropping these in my 1070, I would almost be half-ass tempted to jerk out that uh, True Velvet out of the middle and just run this exact, same exact setup. I am absolutely dead ass in love with this freaking sound of this guitar. Let's go to another clean channel. Uh, that was a Fender Twin we were listening to there. And we're gonna jump over to a completely different tone on this one. Um, oh, I went too far. This is an EVH 5153 EL34. Uh, it has been set up to be very, very glassy sounding. Uh, this is actually one of my main clean tones. I absolutely love this tone, and I'll show you why here in a second. Um, and I'm not going to go through all the stuff. I'm just going to kind of move through it. I'm going to hit them all, but hit them all really quick. Uh, rear double. Both doubles. Again, this sounds fantastic. Brilliant. Front, double. single I mean I've got so many uses for that particular tone right there that is just uh, just throw just a little bit of distortion and maybe a phase on top of that Oh, dude, I mean, you could rock some massive Pink Floyd tones with that. Uh, moving into here now. That sounds fantastic. Uh, front, single. God, I mean, the sounds of these pickups is just absolutely phenomenal. Another cool thing, I don't know if you're a big tone knob user. Most people aren't. I do like my tone knob. The shift on this tone knob is absolutely fantastic. everything about it man and not to get into a creed thing it's just that when i was messing with it that's just that's just that's that sound that is just that sound absolutely i mean that's just it's dead balls accurate i cannot say enough good things about these pickups i gotta be honest with you man they're just they're absolutely phenomenal um i would like to see how they sound in perhaps my s series 
because I think this would really be the thing to, to juice that puppy up. And, you know, I love my S-Series. Absolutely love my S-Series. Um, between the two guitars, Prestige to Prestige, I'd probably still go with the S-Series because I get a lot of the same appointments on the S-Series, plus I don't have this cutaway on it. Going from my Premium to this Prestige, set up exactly the way they are, that would honestly be a tough call. There's things I like about my uh, pre my uh, Premium S-Series better. I still have the stainless steel frets. I got the Panga Panga neck, Panga Panga front fretboard. I got that uh, S-Series body, which is just phenomenal. I got the tilted jack, all the same appointments. I do not have the Low Pro, bummer, but the, tr the trim ornaments is very good, but I do have that extra stable system in the back, which I absolutely love, and I got locking machines on it, and it's $700 less. Uh, so am I saying buy that over this? Absolutely not. The tonal characteristics of this guitar, even though the 1070 has a double single double, and this only has the uh, two doubles, the tonal characteristics of this guitar with that coil tap in it absolutely destroy my 1070. And that is a hard thing for me to say, because I think that is without a doubt one of the greatest guitars in the world. And this thing is just absolutely phenomenal. I mean, I just, I, I have zero complaints about anything on this guitar. Pickups are hard mounted. I do like that. That is a fantastic thing. Um, and I got to be honest, I mean, I've got a hell of a lot more good things to say about this than I do bad things. Like I was saying, out of the box, setup could have been a little better. The setup's actually really, really, really good. But it's, you know, for me, I like really low action. So a, a little lower action for me would have been, you know, just spot on. For the other 90% of the people in this world, this action is going to be phenomenal. This is one of the things I love. Let me get back to a little bit more nasty here. This is one of my favorite things I like to argue with people about. I love it when people say, dude, you know, and I always get this from Les, uh, Les Paul players who probably really don't know a whole lot about guitars. They play Les Paul because they think that's what everybody should play. Dude, guitars uh, with uh, trim loads, they don't sustain as good. Give me a freaking break. The sustain on this neck is everywhere. And that's just the testament to Ibanez and the Japanese team on how well they build a guitar. I mean, this thing will just sustain. I mean, you, you can hit a note, go off and make a sandwich, come back and it'll still be going. It's sustained for days. Another good thing real quick, Back to these pickups, this front pickup. Dude, it is so freaking buttery. This thing is, oh, it's just amazing. It would help if I turn the volume on. <laughs> Did you hear that? Tell me this thing doesn't sustain. No reason to pick the down note. Just let it freaking ride. Absolutely amazing, and I never, I'm going to tell you, the only guitar that I've even come close to saying this many good things about are my Wolfgangs, because uh, even with my Wolfgangs, they have a couple of drawbacks. One of them is the binding and no relief right here on the arm. I wear my guitar high. I'm glad it's got a flat back, but that binding does dig into my arm, and that's really my only complaint about that. I do wish I could get a Wolfgang with a full floating trim, but I understand why he doesn't make it that way, because it is just a more stable system when it sits flush like that, um, unless you let Ibanez put a system on it. <laughs> it's going to be, again, dead ball stable, but the creaminess of these freaking pickups is just amazing. I want you to listen to the difference between these two pickups. And uh, you can fast forward through this, and like I said, you know, I, I know I'm going to be playing for a little bit, and I said I wouldn't do that on my videos, but I really want you to hear these pickups in action because these things sound absolutely amazing. Uh, I'm going to play a little passage uh, from the late, great Gary Moore, and I'm going to go from the uh, front to the back. Check this out.
It's just crazy. <laughs> These things are absolutely brilliant. I love these pickups. The neck sustains for days. This 16.9 uh, degree radius, shred, 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 shred your ass off on this guitar. Go for broke. A little thinner than what I like with the 19 uh, millimeters. I wish it was around 21, 22. I would like it much better. Top is absolutely flawless. Very metal looking. I do like it. Of course, one of my, my big bitches. I hate jacks in the bottom. That's where my EVHs are, but the 1070 spoiled me putting that inverted jack into the front because I can set my guitar on my thigh. Can't do it with these. Minor, minor complaint. Uh, no locking machines. That is a bummer. It does have a very good trim system on it. The Low Pro. This thing is dead balls on the money. Minus the adjustable uh, base on the back. I like that better. Fusion Edge pickups. That is uh, three thumbs up. I almost said a bad word. Phenomenal. And with the coil splitter in them, oh my god, these things were just real quick. One more time. Check this out. This is what the coil split. actually more P90-ish than they are split coils and I freaking love that. <laughs> These things are just, oh my god, I can't, actually I need to do a video on freaking DiMarzio and the just incredible job they did on these pickups. I love these things and I gotta be honest, I thought the EVH pickup was the greatest thing since peanut butter and jelly. Dude, these things are just a freaking beast and with that coil tap in them, I love it, I love it, I love it. All right, I'm gonna wrap this thing up. Again, full mahogany, uh, good neck joint top, has an amazing binding all the way around the guitar, no locking machines. Come on, Ibanez, get on that. Got a lock here, low pro, fantastic. It does not have the right tremolo system on the back. Fell. Fantastic binding job. It's got the aluminum don't glow dots on it. It does have an ebony fretboard. Very nice fretboard. Stainless steel jumbo frets. I do not like jumbo frets because, oh my God, they're just speed bumps. That's all they are. I wish they would go with a skinnier fret on that. My opinion, 99.99999% people in this world are not going to care one iota. That is one big ass chunk of mahogany. This guitar is freaking amazing. It is flawless. And if... If you're into this, there's no other option. If you're into an RG guy and you want to shred, this is the guitar to buy. Not guitar, guitar. This is the guitar to buy. You need to get your hands on this thing. And dude, I never rate anything that high. I did my 1070. I do on my uh, Wolfgangs, except for the one that I got. That was crap, uh, believe it or not. But it was not American. Do not confuse American with Mexican. You cannot confuse the two. They are not the same damn guitars. Uh, it was a Mexican Wolfgang, and it was... Um, I honestly can't say enough good things about it. You know, I could have made this video 38 seconds long if I would have just said the bad things about it. <laughs> it would have literally been 38 seconds long. Video would have been over. <laughs> that would have been done. Uh, I know this was a long video, but I had a lot to cover on it, man. Um... This thing is just, it's, oh my God, it's just an amazing freaking guitar. I can't say enough good things about it. Uh, so on that note, I am going to wrap this thing up. I hope you enjoy this. Uh, if you get a chance to play one of these, absolutely check this thing out. You will love it. I promise you, you will love it. And uh, anything you want, blues, jazz, country, uh, it doesn't matter. Metal, speed metal, death metal, it doesn't matter. Whatever you want, you can get out of this system tonally. This is literally in my top three guitars tonally until I find something better. And I am a gear freak. Uh, so for me, that's actually a pretty big statement to say for me. Uh, for you guys, well, you might think uh, this guy's an idiot anyway. <laughs> you know about it. But seriously, this is in my... Because right now, my top three guitars are my 1996 PV Wolfgang, Gibson ES335, and actually, right now, this RG5320. That is a big-ass statement for me to make. I hope you liked the video. Uh, if you have any comments, put it down in the comments section. If you have any questions, put it down in the comments section. I always say questions section. Please subscribe to my channel. Uh, I've only had this thing going for a few months now, and I got I just got so much stuff that uh, coming up that I'm working on. It's just, I mean, I got videos for days lying down. I just don't have any freaking time because I hate my damn job. <laughs> the 
worst job in the world. But it slowly, it's, it actually started to grow out. It's actually past the quick now. <laughs> so uh, maybe one day I will look down in this reminder of how much I hate my job. And that's what I call this. I hate my job reminder. Uh, that maybe one day it'll be gone. And But trust me, by then I'll be long out of this damn job. <laughs> <laughs> please subscribe to my channel uh, again if you didn't if you have any questions about anything please drop it down I will answer it I love answering questions it is a huge bag of fun for me to do that um, please subscribe and until then play hard and rock hard <laughs>